What's up guys, Evil D here. So today I'm gonna to tell you the story about a time I punched an Esperantist in the balls. Yep, that is as bad as it sounds, but I'll just say now, it wasn't intentional, it, was, it wasn't like I was out there to hurt him or anything, it just kind of like happened. Now I'm just gonna stop digging this hole and get into this story. Okay, so this all happened about three years back. There was a um, local meetup, or well, not really a meetup, kind of like a, um, a congress, I guess, kind of thing. Uh, not even really a congress, it was just like 12 Esperantists will decide to get together in this one Esperantist house for about a week to practice the language. And it was during the summer holidays. Now, at this, um, I guess, gathering, I'll call it, there was uh, probably about 12 Esperantists. So it was me, my mate, some old Esperantists, and a couple of um, younger ones, a couple of kids, in fact. So, in order to make the event interesting, especially for the kids, they decided to organize like all these different types of games, like um, Bull Rush and all this type of stuff, just to try and keep the kids engaged and to make them want to learn the language. Now, one of the games they organized was Murder in the Dark. <laughs> Now, this couldn't possibly go wrong in any way when I'm playing, so for those who don't know what Murder in the Dark is, I'll, I'll just explain it quickly. So basically, Murder in the Dark is the lights are turned off everywhere, obviously it's played at night time, lights are all turned off. One person sits in another room while everyone else skedaddles into the rest of the house and they all hide under things, and under tables and cupboards, on top of cupboards, you know, and they all just hide. And then the person comes in and because it's dark, he's got to walk around and when he finds people, he goes, ah, oh, I've got you and then, yeah, you're murdered type of thing. And then that's, that's it. That guy's out of the game and he's got to also help find the others. So that's the interesting part. So you can't let others find you. Now, eventually there'll be just one person left and he's declared the winner and then the game I guess just starts again. Now, when I play games, I'm the type of person who accidentally modifies a lot of the rules. And then in this particular occurrence, I was one of the people skedaddling and hiding in the house while my mate was standing outside waiting to come find us. So, all lights were turned off, everyone was hidden, I was hiding under a table in kind of like this outdoor patio thing, and there was actually another younger Esperanist next to me, a, a little girl. This is probably a really bad influence. Oh god. So anyway, I was hiding under this table. My mate comes out and he's walking around the house and he's like in the dark going, Oh, Kiev, yes, that's where are you? Oh, Mitrovasvin, ah, Mimodetigasvin, ah, type of thing. So eventually he finds a few people and they're all walking around and then he walks out onto the patio and I'm under this table like this, okay? So he walks out to the patio, I'm hiding under the table and he's standing literally less than 30 centimeters away. His crutch is facing my face and I don't know what happened. Like, just this in insane thought just took over. And as I do, I just let it take over. And he's sitting here, his crutch is right here. And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know why I did it. I just randomly punched him in the nuts. And it was, it was kind of hard too. And the next thing I know, I hear, <laughs> he's on the ground and paying on, and suddenly the lights come on and some of the Esperantists come out and they're like, Oh, Kyo Kazas, Kyo Kazas, Alvi. And he's laying on the ground and he's like, Ah, oh, something hit me in the balls. And he's laying on the ground in pain, like literally almost in tears. And he looks under the table and I'm sitting here like, <laughs> type of thing, staring directly at him. He's like, oh, I'll get you, <laughs> type of thing. Like the death stare. And I'm, at that moment, I knew things were going to just get a lot more interesting at this event. And boy, did they. So anyway, obviously there comes a time when everyone must sleep, including me. So obviously in this house, there's not like 12 beds, okay? So I was sleeping on the couch. And due to prior arrangements, he was sleeping on a mattress right next to me. So that made things even worse, okay? So I'm sleeping on the couch now. It's one in the morning. Everyone else is like... Type of thing and I'm just sitting here wide-eyed awake because I know the moment I close my eyes he ain't asleep he's waiting for it the moment I close my eyes I'm gonna cop one <laughs> in the nuts as revenge and that's understandable that's totally understandable I deserve it but I have to think about myself here self-preservation so I'm laying here at one in the morning going how am I gonna sleep like what am I gonna do he's gonna get me eventually I can't just stay awake all night and then the thought hit me okay because right next to the bed there was this little bookshelf and I grabbed the biggest book I could find, and I think it was uh, La Stona Urubo. Um, so I grabbed this book, it's a nice meaty book, <laughs> and I slid it under my PJs to the nether region, you know, to protect me, and create a nice hard shell. 
And then I thought, yeah, I'm safe now. So if he does get me, at least he's just gonna hurt himself. And then I eventually fell asleep. Now, I swear to God, within five seconds of actually closing my eyes, this fist just goes out of this mattress on the ground, just goes whack into that book. And then I knew if I didn't play along with this, he was gonna continue out. So I was like, ah, like fake, like in pain. And he's like, <laughs> and then he rolled over and he went to sleep. And then I was like, <laughs> Like secretly, I didn't laugh out loud, obviously. And then I fell asleep. Now, me being the smart ass I am, I couldn't help but talk about my master plan. You know, like when you watch those movies and the villain is standing at the end and he's like, this is the part where I tell you everything because you're about to die. It's not possible that you'll suddenly escape this situation and get your revenge. That's me. I was the next morning, literally, I'm like, hey man, how's things? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, what, you think you actually got me last night? <laughs> Sucker, you got Lashtona Uruba. And he's like, what are you on about? And I'm like, I used a book to protect my beep. And you just punched that. You thought you got me, ha, I'm so good, ha. And then you just like, those eyes were just staring directly at me type of thing. He's like, I knew at that moment I made a massive mistake because not only didn't he get his revenge, he felt insulted for not having the ability to get his revenge. So whatever came next, it was going to be worse than what would have came originally. So I was like, uh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> so anyway, the event came to the end and he never got me. But it's been three years since then and he has tried on multiple occasions to get me. Each time it's just been luck that saved me. Like one time literally like a year ago we were watching a movie. I think it was um, a Taco de la Luna Zombie. Or watch it having a good cackle and then suddenly this fist goes warm straight out and hits me in the leg. Like gives me a dead leg but it didn't get me in the region where I thought it was going to get me originally. So I survived that attack, but ever since that time, well not that time, but since the beginning, I've been freaking paranoid about that attack. And I actually wish, I wish I didn't put that book there and I just took it. I just wish I took it originally because ever since then, I've been freaking paranoid. And he's my best mate, so I can't avoid him. So like every now and then, I'll be like, for instance, he'll come over or something and I'll be standing like a meter away from him. my hands positioned strategically in front of my, my region down there because I know the moment those hands move out of the way, it's going to be whack. <laughs> so anyway, that's my story. I know it's not very Esperantist of me, but you know, this is the thing that guys get up to. So anyway, that's my story. That's the end of it. If you've liked this story, please give it a like, share it around with your friends and subscribe to my channel because I literally will release one video a day. It may be in Esperanto, it may be about Esperanto, it may be just random, you know, but I'll release something and they're always going to be funny. I'll try to make them funny. I don't know if I'm really funny. I'll try, I'll try. So anyway, I'll see you in the next video. And if not, well then, you better protect your nether regions from me. <laughs>